Good. All right, I'd like to call the October 8th meeting of the Richmond Parks and Recreation Board uh, to order. Uh, welcome, everybody. We don't have any introductions, I don't believe. The mission of the Richmond Parks, the Richmond Parks, Recreation, Parks and Recreation Department provides for the positive development and well being of the Richmond community through the provision of parks, streamways, trails, recreational programming, and facilities while working in cooperation with other service providers and partners in the community to maximize, maximize all available resources. Uh, before we get started, we need to uh, remove item G under the business. So I would entertain a motion to remove item G from the agenda. So moved. Your second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes for the September uh, 10th meeting. Entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. Make a motion to approve the September 10th part four meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Administration report. I'll just. Uh, if you'll just look at the screen here, uh, Keith is, is getting this up for us. Yes, right there. Thank you. Um, we're going to go through a little bit of um, fun things that have been happening over the last couple months. And um, this is the October Park Superintendent Report. I'll go to the first slide. I'm up. Okay. Yep. Slideshow. First, yep. Slideshow. Oh. Go to slideshow at the top there. Oh. Yep. And then from the beginning. You got it. Okay. Uh, if you'll go to the next slide, please, please. All right. So just want to uh, congratulate uh, not only the parks department as a whole and the greenhouse, but also the park board. Uh, this was a wonderful achievement on um, the Governor's Award on Environmental Excellence. Uh, as you'll see on the top left, this is Laura and Izzy who went and accepted this beautiful award here from Hesselham um, from the IDM Commissioner and the Associate IDM Commissioner. And then uh, only one person was allowed to go talk to the Governor about the project with the Commissioners from IDEM. And so I went up there last Monday and brought some goodies, some Richmond goodies. He also wore the Richmond shirt on his debriefing last week as well as the mug. So show some Richmond love for uh, for parks as well. So just happy that um, we could, you know, show some some state representation uh, for Richmond, Indiana. I'm very excited about that award and very proud. So next slide. Uh, as Royal Division's been hard at work, you'll see on the right-hand side, uh, the Veterans Park has been uh, revamped for the Eagle Scout uh, mem Memorial that will be actually um, be uh, dedicated on Veterans Day. And that's right there. They've uh, landscaped that in, and that was help from Lowe's um, donating the boxwoods. And then they've been clearing at Middle Fork around the embankments and on the additional piers. I just wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about the gardening classes coming up um, October 13th through March 9th. So the community can um, learn a little bit about uh, plants, invasives, and uh, butterfly and bee and bird gardening, all kinds of landscape design. Um, and they'll be providing those classes um, with a, only a donation of $5. So with the centerpiece class in December being a donation of $25. So I'm uh, really happy to be able to offer those to the community. The maintenance division has been very, working very, very hard. Uh, you can see on the far left, this um, project taken on by the crews, the techs that we have at the parking lot. This has been a, an ongoing issue on the parking lot um, and it does not drain appropriately. And so we've been trying every avenue to uh, figure out how to fix this area. And uh, we took it on ourselves and in-house resources. And we worked a little bit with sanitation as well as the street department um, for some help and some guidance. But we have uh, great techs that were able to 
facilitate uh, this improvement. And we were able to put in uh, three drains on this on this lot. And uh, this is the kind of the first phase of the improvements of the overall lot. So uh, it, was, it was something that needed to be happening for quite some time. So we're really happy to get that underway. And uh, it's, it's, it's already draining 10 times better. And we've been staining all of our projects that we've been working on. Um, we've been working with Saver Systems um, with the stain, and we've been um, working on Max Shack. You can see there just to protect all of that wood and our, um, our new uh, ABA ramp that we installed as well as the deck. And then also you can see on the far right, uh, some improvements that we've been doing at Highland to put in their scoreboard, which we'll see here in a little bit. Middle Fork Reservoir, I um, wanted to highlight and be open until um, actually October 30th, I was told today, um, not the 31st, but uh, it's still gorgeous out there. The weather is perfect, and we've already rented 40 paddle boats and two rowboats in the last two weeks. So this is, is really great. We want people to come out and experience um, the water for themselves. It's a wonderful time and something to do right here in Richmond in the backyard. Uh, the Recreation Division, Walking Club and Softball League wrapped up. The basket winners are on the far right. The uh, champions are in the middle, Reed Health, that um, did the, the Industrial League. And then we have the new Trick or Treat in the Park coming up on October 31st from 5 to 7, where anyone can come in. The parks, the parks will be uh, facilitating um, nonprofits to be available to give out candy and uh, prizes and things, so that'll be real exciting. And we'll close down the parks so and we'll be safe to walk around and uh, wanna make sure the community knows to come out. This will be a fun evening and we're gonna light the pond on fire on this night, so uh, make sure to come on out. The other thing that we have upcoming that was in that uh, previous slide was the Veterans Parade on the 7th of um, November. So just wanted to highlight that. Farmer's Market, you can see some of the harvest uh, vegetables that are happening in our market this month. And um, the Senior Center, just want to highlight that they are open and they've been working with the Joy Games um, and they've been, they took a lot of great pictures and uh, I mean, I wanted to share that as well as the pickleball at the Senior Center Joy Games. They were having a very good time out there. And the golf division, on the far left, you'll see West standing with some of the Ivy East uh, girls golf team. And um, they were just happy to have uh, Highland Lake Golf be their home. And in the middle, you'll see the old range picker versus down below the new range picker. <laughs> the old range picker, I think, uh, the West could probably talk a little bit more about this, but it was maybe picking up a couple balls. <laughs> so it was time to invest in a range picker, a uh, very small investment for such a big need. And um, I just wanted to talk about the shout out that he received. Um, and that was wonderful. We're really thank, um, thankful for um, the shout outs that uh, Wes has been getting over at the golf course and everybody else who's involved. And then in the top, top um, left, you'll see the new, uh, it's a, kind of like a, a selfie station, almost a, a photo opportunity station that we're putting in uh, on the back side of the scoreboard. Uh, we put in that, uh, you saw the picture from the maintenance division. You can see that the TEC winners uh, Northeastern actually posed in front of it when it was in its infancy. Now on the left hand side, you can see what it looks like now. So that was the overall goal. And then the other side will be a place where people can also take photo ops and actually feel welcomed when they walk up to, to the course. Um, just show our, our fleet of, of golf carts that are amazing. Veterans Park, we welcomed um, uh, Wiesenhan home. And this was a very big effort put on not only by our department, but also many other departments. And we were happy to host that at Veterans Park. It was a wonderful ceremony. And then, like I said, the boxwoods were donated by, by Lowe's. Um, Phillips Tube Group, we, uh, Monday, I had the pleasure of, maybe it's Tuesday. Everything's running together this week. So Tuesday, I had the pleasure of actually going out and thanking our partners at Phillips Tube Group um, of Indiana for their support of Star Park Playground and um, was able to go to their grand opening. We also provided a um, basket from the greenhouse to welcome them there and they were 
so thrilled with that. So uh, Governor Holcomb did attend um, this, and that was it. It was a great, great evening or a great day. All right, I just wanted to highlight some of our volunteers. Diana Packham comes out every day. I see her walking around the pond. Um, this was her second bag of trash. And so I took the picture and paint her. Uh, and there's a lot of other volunteers who do this on a regular basis, not only get out and exercise, but also help clean up the parks. And I just wanted to say thank you to them. Hills Pet Nutrition, they came out on their day of service. Uh, this is an annual event we do with them. They chose three locations in our parks, the White Falls. Um, they also chose uh, Center City, and they also chose the Bark Park. So uh, we had almost 30 uh, individuals from Hills working throughout our park system, and we had uh, leaders who had who who um, really led them in, in every effort so that we could get all kinds of things done, like planting trees, uh, clearing brush, painting. They also built this beautiful doghouse at the bark park for shade for the dogs. So great stuff. All right, this is a video I wanted to share about Hibbert coming out to Middle Fork Reservoir for their day um, of service. Fun little. Hey, I'm Caleb, and we're from the Richmond Parks Department, and we're so glad that Hibbert's out here today helping us out with picking up some brush and trash, so we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so we're very thankful for Hibbert. They, uh, you know, many, many hands make light work, and um, they did a lot uh, in, in their day of service that day. And challenge match is coming soon. We had a kind of a strategic planning session on how we were going to move forward with the challenge match as a selected partner with the Wayne County Foundation. The challenge match is 11-2 through 11-10. And we just kind of landed on the theme of what matters most. And when we talk about what matters most right now, you know, we, we all are thinking health, family, um, safety. We're thinking, um, you know, fresh air, we're thinking parks. And so we, we put together our word cloud and we'll be utilizing this for our branding strategy just to get people on board um, with the challenge match. So again, 11-2 through 11-10, a lot of donors uh, take this time and uh, I know the board really helps facilitate this as well and uh, that will be exciting. So I just wanted to get that on your calendar so you know and I'll also send you some additional information I'll share. All right, that's all I have on my report if there's any questions i'll be happy to answer those any questions Comment? okay division reports uh, i think everybody's got one in their packet so unless there's any questions we'll move on board concerns and comments delegation and correspondence whole business new business Comprehensive Park Master Plan Final Adoption, Katie and uh, Taylor Seeker, Seeker and Williams, Design Group via Zoom. Is Katie there? Hello, can you guys hear me? Hi. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just making sure all the technology is working today. Um, well, thank you for having me back. I'm sorry I had to come digitally today. I had a few scheduling conflicts that didn't allow for the travel. Um, but um, I just wanted to update you on some of the things that have happened since I was there last month um, in regards to the plan and how um, we've received some public comments and cleaned all that up. Um, and hopefully we're able to kind of move forward with the plan approval and adoption tonight. Um, Denise? Does everybody have, what does everybody have? Remind me. Every, I, 
you gave them a link that I had sent out, the revised link, so they okay. have that. But um, as we discussed today, uh, everyone has been wonderful at their interest in this document. And I'm going to go ahead and just pass it around the public comment sheet to okay. guys in case there was any uh, questions about that. Okay, perfect. Um, I wasn't sure what was in the room and what wasn't as I started to refer to things. So um, what Denise has just passed around is our kind of compiled public comment. So after the meeting last month, um, we shared all the documents with you, the master plan team and posted them online um, and invited anyone and everyone to send us their thoughts and ideas and suggestions. Um, so what's on the papers being passed around are kind of all the comments we received. Um, and then we always like to go through those and provide a response um, that allows everyone to kind of acknowledge how we interpreted it and how we updated it, or in some instances, um, our recommendation as to why we should leave it as it currently is and make no change. Um, so we did get comments, as Denise said, I think um, from everyone on the board um, from the master plan team and even some comments from the public. Those came through the website. Um, and everything that was provided uh, was really great thoughts. Um, people caught some edits that we um, kind of missed even in our multiple reviews. So that's always incredibly helpful. Um, and then there were just some pieces that needed a little bit more explanation. So hopefully we clear all of that up for everyone. Um, so everything that's listed on the sheet um, all the edits that say we will update it, um, those have all been made. Um, so the link that was sent out um, takes you to the latest and greatest um, all updated final document um, that includes kind of the executive summary all the way through the action plan um, that shows your priority projects for the next five years. So I'm happy, I have everything digitally. Um, if there are other questions, I'm happy to share my screen and we can look at things or talk through things. Um, but that's kind of the update um, that I have. I think in our view and in talking with Denise, we, we feel that it's a pretty strong document that um, represents the input from the community as well as kind of the strategic thoughts that you've shared um, as a board and what we've heard from staff. So it's, it's balanced out very well. Um, and hopefully you guys agree that I think it's going to be a great tool to, to move things forward for the next few years. And after I just want to jump in here, Katie, sorry. As Katie and I spoke today, I actually printed it and had a few minor suggestions, mostly formatting. Um, sometimes it helps when you see it right in front of you. Um, and so uh, we, we went back and forth on some of those today and uh, talked through some of those formatting so that we could provide a, a good solid link you know, to this document for you. Um, Katie had suggested that you know, there might be a few more formatting. You guys might still find some things in that link once you review it and that's okay. But making the adoption is the adoption of their content and that we really want to move forward with that with the adoption so we can go forward with the implementation. So tonight I had a agenda item for resolution one 2020 as well as an ABA um, uh, title two um, agreement that the DNR requests. These would go into the actual finalized document um, and so the issue is I have some revisions I'll need to make. So I'd like to uh, recommend that we push the, the signatures um, to the October 22nd meeting. I would also like to entertain a pleasure from the board to see if you would like to just review that link again um, and, and then just come back on the 22nd at our special meeting to then formally adopt and sign. I think that would be advised by the I would like to see that again. I mean, you have a final say. So. Right. And I am happy. I know Katie and I kind of talked a little bit about that. I'm happy to print off a draft for you. It's a, it's a huge document. We're talking 216 pages, um, something along those lines. And I'm happy to print that out. And then um, everyone can come into the boardroom and read it. Or I'm happy to give you a copy if you'd like to take it back 
Um, you just physically have it in your hands. You just need to let me know if that's what you'd like. What's the rest of the board feel? Are you, are you comfortable waiting until uh, the 22nd, meeting the 22nd to finalize everything? Uh, yeah, if you're directing that towards me, I'm completely oh. comfortable with that. I wasn't sure. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. 22nd is when they would prefer to go ahead and move forward with the approval of the adoption. Is that still okay with your timeline, Katie? Yep, that works for us. Okay. Okay, is there anything else? Not on that one. We can move that up to old business for the 22nd. Okay. okay. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Okay, so we want to go to item B, approval of change order number one for the fence addition to the playground at Star Park, not to exceed seventeen thousand two hundred sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. I can talk about that. Um, as we know, uh, many of our quotes uh, included a fence. Uh, Miracle Midwest uh, did not have their quotes available in the time that they bid. Um, so they asked that they could submit that as a change order and um, reviewing all the other uh, bids. Um, this is a, it's a very good price for fencing. They actually did a couple different uh, quotes. Um, this one was from a local supplier of Lowe's and we are requesting to fence all four sides as well as one walking gate on, um, it would actually be on the south uh, center side as well as well as one double gate on the northwest side. Um, that would mean that option two and then the two options below on that change order would be um, what we'd be looking at. That change order number one would be coming to the board for approval in the amount of $17,262.50. Thanks to our generous community where we will be able to remove this fence and uh, put in a brand new fence that's safe and uh, fence in all four sides and it will make this playground even more safe for our community. Entertain comments concerning the change order? Sorry if I missed it, where's the money coming from? Through the Star Park project. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I uh, entertain a motion for approval of the change order number one for the fence addition to playground at Star Park, not to exceed $17,262.50. Second. Make a motion to approve. There a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Winter farmer market, farmer's market location recommendations. Yes, so in your packet, you received an item C, uh, the winter Richmond Farmers Market recommendation. Uh, we've been reviewing not only just this year, but in years prior, locations that made sense for the winter market. Um, for the last two years, we've been able to hold the winter market at the Senior Center, which is an ideal space um, for ADA accessibility, as well as restrooms and a nice warm area. However, um, looking at that space, we have outgrown that space. Uh, we also uh, are looking at the social distancing requirements that we may have and that this space may not be ideal moving forward. And looking at other options, option A you'll see on your paper was to put a permanent slash temporary um, tent at Elstro. And when we reviewed all the tent options and something that would be appropriate for the space to be out during the time frame, we were looking at over $94,000 plus heat units. Um, we did actually look and reach out to a couple grant sources and we're not funded. Therefore, we moved on to a potential option B. And this is one that has been uh, recommended also by the advisory team of the uh, Richmond Farmers Market and also the best option that we 
when you look at the pros and cons and trying to determine uh, where we are where we are currently, it holds enough space for the vendors and the growth of the market. Um, it's also in the central business district as well as um, it does have restrooms. There'll be some some cons, including some needs to be winterized and also heating options. But overall, we feel that this is the best solution. Um, option C, the costs are unknown. And the reason why the costs are unknown is um, we want to make sure that we can continue the market year round. There might be some problematic situations if we have to close um, the, the center at any point of time. And um, that would mean that we would be out of a home as well for the winter market. So some of the costs unknown here would be, um, you know, loss of revenue if uh, we had to close the market for a certain period of time. It would also be loss of revenue for not being able to um, provide the, the cost that we would like to provide for the vendor to be a part of the winter market and also the opportunities that we would like to see. So we've given you option B, C, or A, B, and C. And my recommendation, as well as Caleb's recommendation, is to go with option B. And I think this is worthy of discussion uh, amongst the board. I think it's important that you're involved um, publicly with the options that we have in front of us. And um, I know Caleb and I have I've visited a lot of places in the last three years for winter market options. And um, I think utilizing our facility and really making it an activation of space would be ideal going forward where we can see some additional revenue in the future. So this is almost a, a long-term opportunity that can, uh, can help us achieve additional revenue for the department as well. What do the vendors think of option three? Option B is they're, they, they, they want a home. <laughs> they want a home and they're asking over and over again, where's our home going to be? And a lot of people are concerned about the home being at the center, um, you know, this year. So we knew that something needed to be done. Uh, Caleb spoke with the advisory team about it. Um, they would love to have a tent at Ellsville. That would be their, their first option. We just can't afford it, unfortunately. Um, they would like to have a year-round spot. And um, so this is the next best thing. Somewhat close to the central business district, um, a big open canvas, something that we can winterize and, and, and go forward with. What's the possibility of this being a year-round spot? Uh, well, the possibility, um, it, it would, it would, it would depend. It, it, I'm not sure uh, how the community would feel about that since Elstro has always been the home in the spring and the summer market. I think that's what Elstro was designed for. I think we need to make sure that we um, we continue that effort. But uh, this is the next best thing for a winter option, in, in my opinion. So you mentioned that you applied for grants. We did. I purchased a tent. You guys didn't get it. Have you scored other grants? Um, so the United Way funded the, the farmer's market um, for loss of revenue options at $10,000. And um, the, the other grants that we had applied for, for 10 options were declined. So. The good news is, is that, um, you know, we're just going off of a, a campaign with Patronicity. Um, this was our our fifth project with Patronicity. We've got them engaged in this winter activation proposal. Um, they're very excited. We also met with them on uh, yesterday on a conference call. And uh, if the board board's pleasure is to move forward with the recommendation from Caleb and I, then they're willing to um, come in with half of whatever we need. So can you tell us more about Patronicity? Yeah. I don't fully understand. So Patronicity and is a uh, joint partnership with um, the IHCDA, Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority. And so this is, like I said, the, the sixth, this will be the sixth project that we, we do with them. So Patronicity is a crowdfunding campaign site. And um, 
you have to go through an approval process to be able to utilize that function and also get the matching opportunity from the IHCBA. So it's all about creating places in your community. And um, depending on the level that you request depends on the amount that you have to match. So in a $15,000 campaign, we would have to match up to 35% of that per donor, so $5,250. So we would need three donors at $5,250 to be able to go forward. Yeah. So it's a right around roughly 35%. That's, that's not taking out of it. So we provide 35% of the no. funds? No, we raise okay. the, the money through the crowdfunding site. Um, so we raise fifteen thousand dollars. They donate fifteen thousand dollars. Gotcha. Yep. And so it all goes through the site. Um, and then, um, like I said, we've done. This will be the sixth project with them, and uh, and they are very excited about it going forward for a reactivation of space. Um, and I did send out the proposal of the winter activation, talking a little bit about the statement of need and also some of the other ideas for the activation of space, some other partners that we might be able to use going forward in this space. I think the, the benefits of winterizing this and using Starginet year round is a, um, are endless. I think that it's, we're already set up for the restrooms. Uh, we already put in the air handlers last year. Um, so we're already set up, ready to go for that. It would just be to um, get everything heated and get the building all sealed up so that we can heat it. Um, it, it's and it, that's the twenty thousand dollars. Correct. So that would be to winterize and to heat. Correct. Yeah. And the rental needs that I put there, plus rental needs, is because um, we have a lot of people who request chairs and tables, and um, this might be a way that we can make that happen. Um, a lot of people. Um, just yesterday, we were down there reviewing some things, and there was a wedding, and it was gorgeous. And they were setting up outside. And, they have gotten all their chairs and tables all set up inside. But I mean, when somebody reserves the facility, it's an open campus. They don't have any chairs or tables uh, for them at all. So they have to go with another rental company to bring those in and pick those up per table per chair. And so I think that's something that we're not capitalizing on um, with, with our department as a, as a revenue stream. We have not looked into just yet in that facility. And um, it's something I think can really can really drive business and revenue for us. And so that's something that when I said plus rental needs, we're, we're really getting some, some prices on some round tables, some, some, some rectangle tables, some chairs, some um, uh, racks and wheeling racks and stuff like that. So we can provide that as an additional cost to the, to the renter. What about lighting for those? Um, there's plenty of lighting with the re renovation of Voices of the Gorge. There's also lighting inside the building. Um, this is uh, also home to Richmond Shakespeare Festival, and their, th their theater um, festival, and so they put on all kinds of um, plays at, in the evening, and it's been just fine. And weddings, um, you know, they usually tend to, tend to reserve three days in a row, and um, they usually are in the evening, you know, that they have these weddings going right into the, to the late hours, so. No one's ever complained about any lighting issues. We will, but the market be there during the day, 11 to, to per, 9 to 2 pretty much, and then we'd be able to on a Saturday reserve that in the evening. And there's ample parking. There's 88 parking spots. And if there's any additional parking spots that are needed, they can park along the curb or they can park down at Veterans or any um, the, the child center, the early child center. Family and Children's Services Center. So on the, the fundraising, again, mm -hmm. yeah. um, said they will provide up to 50%. Mm -hmm. So if our goal is $20,000 and we raise $8,000, do we get the $8,000 or do we then lose out on the other $10,000? We have to meet the goal in order to receive the match. Yes, so we 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 qualify. We at the beginning of your campaign, you have to either request partial funding or all funding. So we always do partial funding, just so we get whatever match we can get through the through the process. Okay. 
So I really like this idea. Thanks. I think it's really exciting, um, and I think it has uh, a, a bigger, bigger implications for the park system than just the farmers market. Mm -hmm. And the farmers market is a huge thing all by itself, and the potential additional revenue is really interesting um, for something like this. Um, I don't know where we go from here, but for me, I think I would like to see a little bit more of a plan so far as how do we get that revenue on the other side of the project? Um, how are the fees going to change? How do we remain competitive? Um, how much business do you think we can expect throughout the winter months? All that sort of stuff. And then how long is it going to take for us to recoup our investment? Mm -hmm. um, because even if we're uh, fundraising for the whole thing, it's still an investment, a $20,000 investment for us. Mm -hmm. So how long is it going to take to make it work? Okay. Yep. We can definitely come up with that information. I will say that um, we've been doing some estimates on winterization, and we brought in uh, Primax, who has been a, the leader in PPE in this area and in the region. Uh, they had some great ideas on uh, putting up panels that would be digitally printed with some of the um, historic uh, pictures that we have. It, of Star Genetta, the piano factory of what once was. And um, so I think that, you know, with, with their help, um, they, were, they were very excited about this project. So I think moving forward, working with them is great. And to start getting this project off the ground is what we really need to do so the winter market does have a home. Um, Caleb has uh, came up with a very creative name and slogan, slogan at home for the holidays. And um, so we're, we're, we're ready. We just need uh, you know, approval to go forward and, and get everything situated and get the bids out for the meeting and, and start going forward. So we're prepared to make this work so that the market can have a home for the holidays. Just a few more questions that I would have. Okay. Um, it seems like between patronicity and it looks like that's going on during the Wayne County challenge or the Wayne County matching thing. Um, that fundraising is going to be pretty easy, but I would like to see some sort of contingency plan. If we are five thousand dollars short in our fundraising, do we give up on the project? Where does that rest of money come from? So, there's any sort of contingency plan there. Yeah. And then, what are the ongoing costs with associated with the project? So, are the panels that we're talking about installing going to be permanent? Do those have to be taken down at the date of spring? What are the costs associated with the new HVAC system, all that stuff? So the HVAC, it wouldn't necessarily be an HVAC system. What it would be, um, you know, in, in looking at what would be heating the facility would be uh, about three forced air units ran with gas. And so we're still working on in kind donations for some of those things. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that, that that'll, that'll help with that effort. Contingency funds, we do have some funds in a donation account for Sturgeonette. That we'll be um, able to use if we need to. And we did talk to Bridget, who's in charge of patronicity, about if for some reason we didn't make our, make our match goal, if that could be applied. And she said, absolutely. We'll talk about that yeah. if we need to. All right, awesome. Yep. So um, we'll talk about that as well. And then for the rental stuff, is that going to be stored on site? Are we going to need to build a shed out back to hold all that stuff? That's that. Mm -hmm. We have um, been working with our techs on some of their ideas. And uh, we'll make sure that they're enclosed and um, and key, so that if someone were to rent the facility and they need the chairs and tables, mm -hmm. they would pay the extra to have the key to be able to utilize us. Good questions. For me, I don't know if there are any others, but putting all that on the paper, all those questions, and then talk about the um, revenue return would be beneficial. Okay. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, I'm concerned about location. Okay. Um, mainly the fact that Elsewhere Plaza, everybody knows that it's a place for farmers market. Even when we went to the senior center, that was still kind of obscure all the way. People had a hard time finding it. And I'm sure if it was centralized location, it would have had more, more business. So nothing against start to that. It's just I you're right, it says here in location. And I'm just worried about folks who already are struggling just to get to Elsewhere Plaza are now being told to come, you know, further. I'm just concerned about location, that's all. 
And, and that's something that Caleb and I have actually spoke about, and that's on us to promote. Um, it's on us to, to get partners down there to do live streams and, and also do um, live remotes. It's on us to get people there. It's also on the vendors. The vendors have a responsibility to get their customers to the market. And we have a responsibility to also promote and advertise and let them know what we are. And so we'll be definitely working on that as well. Um, and again, you know, this is this is a month away, and um, we need to we need to finalize some things and get the bids going and uh, make sure that we are good to go and uh, get things in production. So this is the best option. We have done our due diligence. We have worked through all of the options that we have available to us and what can be the best return on investment, including that the advisory board of the Richmond Farmers Market has agreed that we can increase the rates and will support an increase of rates um, if we're able to go here. And that will not be the case if we are at the senior center again. Um, we'll actually have to decrease the rates and figure out how to put people in separate rooms to properly social distance. And that could be a concern. Be a concern for the momentum of the market. With the market right now, it's become an essential service and it's an essential option for a lot of people in this area because of the pandemic EDT cards that are being doubled right now, as well as the SNAP that's being doubled right now. In 2019, um, the, the actual spring and summer market, um, we were able to double around $13,000 in SNAP. This year alone, already, we're over 30 grand. That just tells you how essential this market is and how important it is to make a decision and move forward so that we have a place to call home for the market, for this central market and start advertising it. Um, every single market, vendors are asking where are we going to be? We cannot leave them hanging any longer. We want to have this conversation with the board. We think it's essential that you're involved and I can assure you, Caleb and I have done everything in our power to make sure this is the best option possible. And it's the best option for the market going forward until we have a permanent home at Elstro, which we have in our master plan and I've identified that we would like a shelter structure that can be winterized. And until we have that, this is our best option going forward. I agree that the location is is a little more difficult with the proper advertising. I think not only will it help the, the uh, vendors down there, but I think it'll also start help the stars in there to be more showcased. It's a hidden gem for this community. A lot of people don't even know it exists. The other thing that we thought when we were doing this is that there's a lot of food trucks that also rely on the market. And it can be almost another destination option where we are able to put food trucks in the lot and also along the back area by the Walk of Fame. So, I mean, we've been we've been pros and cons in it for a, a, a long time. We've been working on this also since June, trying to figure out if we could even get CARES Act money for something um, to be able to have a COVID response. So this is this is where we're at. This is why I'm bringing it to the board because this is our option. This is the best option, the most viable option for our community and, and one that we can reap benefits long term, which makes it even more um, viable. So it's not just for reaping benefits and revenue for the market and getting them and their momentum going forward. It's for our entire apartment. And that's why it's important. Okay, it's a great idea. And if I was allowed to make a recommendation or a motion, I'm looking for approval right now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Parker. Uh, with that thought, I will uh, assume there's no more comments or questions. Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion for approval uh, of the farmer's market location in uh, Starch Net. So I'm, I'm until I see more information on the revenue side, I'm not going to be able to vote in favor. Just going to throw that Okay. Well, we got October 22nd special meeting. Providing that time for it. Yeah. And I'm happy. I can't be voted on. 
down. <laughs> I am happy to give you the give the entire board a um, a spreadsheet as soon as we can get that those numbers on the return on investment um, calculated. I'm happy to provide that. Um, I guess at this point in time, the it is tainted. If there's no second, I agree with first. No one. No one has made a motion. No one has there's no motion, motion on the on the table. So, <laughs> pleasure of the board. Okay. Uh, we'll make a motion to move forward with the location recommendation. There a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. And I will get you everything that you need, Dakota. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Um, we need approval to rescind various contracts. So I'm going to start with contract number 88-2020. Uh, and you do tell us what those contracts are. Absolutely. Um, each contract will need a motion and approval. This is for, um, just as reference, the Art is Everywhere grant received from Oprah in the amount of $5,000. Uh, these contracts were approved at the July Park Board meeting by the Park Board. The contracts were not signed or executed by all parties, which requires rescinding the contracts in a board meeting. Um, please note that I'm working on with the mayor and the also, also the commission artists on this project and we hope to have a, a plan moving forward. Until then, we will not have contracts for signatures and we will to resend these contracts uh, individually. Okay, so I would entertain the motion to rescind contract number 88-2020. I have a question. Okay. So, so why were there not signatures? Um, when they're not executed by all parties, then that would reflect um, a relook at the project. And um, the administration was wanting to revise some of the art that had been indicated in the grant approval. And so we're working with OPRA and with um, the mayor on this project. And so we can provide some contracts moving forward for the commissioned art. And then to remind you about the commission art, it was a um, tree garden outside of the office to reflect a, a, a nature state. It was a um, um, hopscotch and um, and kind of interactive art piece along Center City, and then it was some um, electrical transformer boxes at Glenmore Park, as well as a, the creation of the music notes to form from the playground down to the music garden through our, our so. So uh, we're just working with a few of those art options and making sure exactly what the administration would like moving forward. And then once we have those approvals, we'll come back with the contracts to the board. And we'll keep you posted on the project as well. Okay. Again, I want to ask for a motion for rescinding contract number 88 May 2020. So, here's a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, here, a motion to approve re to rescind contract number 89 May 2020. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We need a motion to approve the rescinding of contract 90 days 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, approval for rate increases for Island Lake Golf Course. Is West still on? <coughs> Um, in your new business packet, you will see the Highland Lake, Lake Golf Course peak rates. I know that Mike had some questions. Were you able to connect with Wes today? I was. I was. 
we printed out some copies just so if you needed this to review them that you could. So I had Wes there. Yeah. Wes, you want to talk about your your uh, your new rate proposal? Well, we're raising our weekend rate up to forty three dollars. It was thirty thirty eight plus tax, but we're going to include the tax and make it forty three, which is a fourteen percent uh, increase. We've increased our cart rates a dollar, and we've raised uh, their standard pass uh, twenty five dollars and our um, senior standards up to three seventy five. And our uh, unlimited riding is up to 1400 So we've raised those substantially. Now, uh, the area golf course surrounding me, uh, Winchester, Liberty, Turtle Creek, Richmond Elks, uh, they're all 39, or we were 39. They were 35, 36, and 40 on the weekend. And we're going to go to 43. So, um, and then on their weekday rates, they were 32, 31. 35 and 40 and we were at 38 so uh, we're a little bit more uh, we need to stay competitive uh, like Mike and I was talking about earlier uh, one of my main source of income out here is our seniors on a fixed income so you kind of got to uh, they're the ones that kind of support the place with memberships and on daily rates uh, so you can't go too can't go increase too fast or you're going to turn them away as long as they're seeing the improvements we've done out here i don't think they're going to have a problem paying a dollar or two dollars more than what they are now um, so I, I feel comfortable of uh, where we're raising this to and i feel comfortable that the uh, patrons who support us will will support those prices uh, there is one thing down at the bottom left where I say uh, other sources of income. We do have uh, discounted rates, rate programs. Um, one thing that I didn't change on there, and I just uh, figured it out for the year, uh, Groupon, which is not on there, has blown the doors off this place. Uh, we have received $8,000 of additional revenue from Groupon. Uh, now, their rates are a little cheaper than ours, but we do get paid by Groupon. But you have to look at it. These are people that may not have even come on property. So uh, that, to me, is an additional revenue. And uh, we'll be signed up again with them this year. I had to change a, a few stipulations um, that they weren't going by my protocol of, for example, a Groupon should not be used on a Saturday, Sunday, or a holiday morning. It should be after 11 o'clock and cannot be used for tournament play or a golf outing. So uh, that, that's, that's gotten edited. And, uh, but that to me was a big number. Uh, and that's, that's one of the sources of why we've been so busy this year. Um, I can tell you that even though we were closed in two weeks in May, which was probably cost me eight or ten thousand dollars for those two weeks, uh, we have flourished and uh, getting close to where a, a good October uh, we will probably reach uh, four hundred. So um, that shows you how busy we are. And a matter of fact, uh, during this session i probably had uh, 45 to 50 players walk through this door from 3 30 until now so it continues on i did have some conversations with wes and uh i think he's answered my questions uh, i think with the with the uh, volume that we've got uh with the rate increases uh, i think we'll you know i want to make sure that we were covering our costs and particularly with the new cards and whatnot and I think with the volume increases that we've got, um, I think we'll cover those and, and uh, uh, certainly have seen a pickup in business compared to the last couple of years. So uh, I feel comfortable that, that this, is a, this is a good rate to reduce. 
So, any questions? Yes. Um, Wes, have you talked to members about this increase? I have not. I've just talked to this to Denise and my staff and Mike. Uh, have they asked me if there was going to be? Uh, no. Uh, but I think they expect it. And I think they expect that because of uh, what we've done to the golf course um, and the new golf carts that we have and also the amount of play they've seen that's out here. It's, it's almost expected. So I have a related question, but first, just a clarification, because I don't understand. There's a, a senior fee and a junior fee. I can guess what a senior fee is, but I don't know what a junior fee is. Junior fee is uh, someone that's in high school or under. Oh, okay. Great. And then a question somewhat related. Um, I, I'm not at all opposed to this. I think this is great. Um, but I wonder on some of these, especially like the weekday green fee and the park fee that are $19, why not bump it to 20? Um, I can't imagine just from my personal perspective that somebody who's willing to pay 19 won't pay 20 to round it out. But I didn't know from your perspective what that would look like. Um, yes, you could. Um, if, I, if you're going to raise the rate I'd rather do it on a green fee side because you don't pay taxes on green fees. You pay taxes on cart fees. So I raise it a dollar just because of the, the new carts. But I, if I, if you want to go another dollar, then I would do it on green fee sides to keep our taxes down. If I could jump in Wes, um, <clears throat> just because I'm not sure uh, if Dakota's a golfer, but <laughs> Uh, the green fee would then couple with the cart fee, okay? So uh, you would be paying the, you know, the $38 here um, for total. We don't want to um, bury ourselves. We want to make sure that we are competitive um, because of what we have to offer. I, we, Wes and I actually talked a lot about this, didn't we, Wes? Yeah. Because I was like, why are we raising it more? Come <laughs> on. And, you know, but it's true. We are a municipal course. We need to make sure that we are reasonable and that we're the best price out there for what we offer and what we're able to give our, our community, not to forget that we are here to serve them as well. So when we, when we talked a little bit about this, Wes had indicated that, you know, we, this is a kind of an incremental because of the other things that we want to do to the course this given year in 2021, and that we don't want to get ourselves too far where we cannot raise again, or we won't have the ability to down the road. Or we'll be stuck at a level. Um, and do you have anything to add to that, Wes? Yes, I do. There's one thing that uh, non-golfers may not understand. Um, that's for one person. There's two people who ride in a cart. So we're actually getting $38 per cart with two people riding. That's just not for, uh, and that's what you want to try to do. Now, it was very challenging this year because we had to have one person per cart in, uh, in June until June 14th, which really hurt the revenue. But we bounced back pretty pretty good and but i just want you to be aware that this is per person not per cart and then when we have high school matches out here and parents come and want to take a spectator cart it's eight it's twenty dollars for 18 holes Any other questions for Wes? I'm going to entertain the motion to approve the rate increase for the Highland Lake Golf Course. Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Wes, we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just to remind the public, uh, you know, we do have the early bird time of January 1st through February 15th where our rates will not change. 
So the early bird rates will be in effect January 1st through February 15th, and that will be the 2020 rates. People should get in and, and get get their memberships. Okay. Um, approval rate increase for park facilities with all rates. I asked Sheila if she wouldn't mind to speak today so that I wasn't the only one talking. <laughs> but, um, and she had a summary that she wanted to provide for us for these park fees and charges. Um, we are also asking you to be price increases on our facilities and shelters. Um, one we were looking at was MagShack with the new deck and the handicap ramp that was added. We are looking to increase that to $85, which is a $10 increase. Mary Scott, we wanted to increase as well on $10, which would bring it to $95. It has the new handicap ramp that they added up front, and the playground has been brought up to code there. And it's sort of, when you're not Mary Scott, you feel like you have your private part, really. <laughs> Because you know, no one else is going to be there. Uh, Springwood Pavilion, we would like to raise to $170, $10 increase as well. Um, we have a plan to put in uh, some skid proof flooring, uh, some ceiling fans, and maybe some possible other little things sourcing that up. Um, that is a popular rental facility, and I think they would appreciate the upgrades, and I don't see an issue. With that. Lindler Clubhouse, we wanted to increase uh, only a five dollar increase. It only holds twenty people, so we didn't want to be going the whole. Uh, but it does have a very nice kitchen that had been renovated a few years back. It has central air, the handicapped restrooms, uh, and it is a, a very nice facility for a smaller gathering. Uh, also, open air shelters. We have Clear Creek, Star Park. West Side Lions that we have not rented before. We want to start renting those. Um, $50 rental fee, they are smaller shelters. Um, and then we wanted to add Shelter 11, if you remember, is the one that uh, the tree fell on and destroyed. We are going to be building a new uh, shelter, but we're gonna move the location closer to the playground, or closer to our office, and we're planning a larger a larger than maybe the ladies. And with the access to the playground, the splash pad, the restrooms, we would like to rent that for $100. And just as a side note, that actually that um, project is being bid out and we'll receive those bids to leave next week and then we'll be able to share those with the board on the 22nd. Um, uh, some of our larger venues, we didn't fill uh, an increase at this time on the band shell. It's not rented as much as it used to be in the past. Um, people tend to really want to gather at Elstro, so we did know we would like to do a $100 increase on the rental fee for Elstro. Uh, and also the Star Connect with uh, the improvements we're thinking of doing and it's becoming more popular all the time. We wanted to raise it $100 every day on the uh, it's 450 now, so we'd like to raise it to 550 for the first day. Second day, 450. Third day, 350. And that's like a hundred dollar increase on each each of those days. And then if we get to do the table and chairs later, you know that's an added revenue and something we can have a package deal worked out. Just so it's a side note, we've had three weddings since Friday. So from Friday to yes. Friday. There'll be three weddings that have happened down there, um, which is exciting. It's a great place to get married. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So just as a side note, sorry. And what we have found is when they're doing it for a wedding, they always want either two to three days at least. We're setting up the wedding and come back if they want. Uh, and they don't even bat an eye when we were telling them the price we had. So I, I feel like it would be improvements that, that we need. Uh, the only ones we did not want to increase in our enclosed was our Charles house and our Don's cabin. Uh, there's no renovations that have been done. Uh, we did increase in, in 2019 when we did put in the air conditioning tables and chairs. So we thought we would just leave those the same and like our 85 currently. 
and Middle Fork Cabin. Um, there's been no renovations for in 2020, uh, but there's no running water there or a restroom inside. So we were going to leave that fee as is as well. Thank you for covering all of our thought process. And the frontline staff worked together on this proposal mm -hmm. um, and a recommendation to myself. And then we talked through it and, uh, and then we're bringing that to the board for recommendation. Along with, you'll see on below, um, the Richmond Farmers Market season pass increase. Uh, we were waiting to see if we were able to go forward with Starginet. Again, also waiting to make sure that the Starginet um, increases would also be reflected so we can give you that return on investment information. Any questions concerning the rate increase, proposed rate increase? How many ways do you have down there to start with? We actually had, um, it was rented 115 times in 2018. We do not have a, a, a rental amount on uh, 2019. And we can pull one from 2020. Um, we, you know, we, we didn't rent anything larger than 250 for a long period of time. So uh, due to COVID-19, so it, the numbers might be down in 2020, but I would think that 115 in 2018 would be reflective of like normal rentals. But I, I can see that increasing as people start participating in weddings down there and seeing how awesome it is and wanting to have a wedding down there as well. So telling so their families. days, mm -hmm. you're saying? Yes. I had okay. several schools, high schools that had their proms there. Mm -hmm. Don't you uh, yeah, I, was, I was just saying, someone coming from wedding recently in the past couple of years, I was sure what uh, started out was one of the places we looked at and it, it blew the water out by price and area. We went to a completely different location out of state, but like, if we were going to have it here, there wasn't anything comparable price and everything like that. So $100 is going to even come close to that. And they also receive it from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. for that given day on that one day rental. And so, you know, we, we don't just say they can have it for two hours and clean up and go home. It's the full day rental, which I think is, is something that um, we're all sensitive about because we know it takes time to, to decorate for special, um, special uh, events like this. So I think all this sounds great. Um, I have a few questions on the actual sheet just to make sure I'm understanding that, but I want to just mention that. Um, I think that's one of the things, Denise, I'd like to see later is how much can we charge for this to actually be competitive, mm -hmm. but not be lagging behind. Right. We should be able to make a lot more money on this when it's completely enclosed. So yeah. I'd love to see that. And maybe, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, maybe even do that increase as a special resolution sometime after that project is done. Still do this increase, but yeah. I'm just running out there. But so about the actual sheet, I see a lot of slash marks and I just mm -hmm. so just for Mac Shack, we're looking at an increase from 75 to 85, and then it says slash 100 to slash 110. And I'm sorry, I don't have that same sheet in front of me. It is because it's a holiday, holiday rate. rate. Yeah. Sorry, it's a holiday rate. So the one, the 100 is a holiday. Correct. Okay. And that actually is an increase to um, from previous, but we do because we have to have a janitor come in on a holiday, mm -hmm. which costs us more money. That makes a lot of sense. Make sure the facility is ready to go. And then for starch and that, there's a $200 deposit that's non-refundable. What's that? So when they rent, they have to put $200 down. If they cancel their wedding or their event, oh, so they do not get it refunded. Okay, that makes yep. sense. So it's not on top of the... No. The rent. Okay. And we do require a $200 uh, data security on Elster. Yeah. They get the key and then they have to yeah, they have to lock up and then that And then there's the start and that employee rate that looks like it's reducing. So there is in 2020, um, we did half price one day only, and there has been a significant amount of employees that were interested in this area. So we just cited half price 
for the time that they would like to use it instead of a free rental. So for example, we offer our employees as a perk two or three rentals, two rentals per year. If they choose start to net, that's our that's our area, but unfortunately we can receive a lot of income for that. So we have to accommodate the income that we would have received. Does that make sense? Yes. I my big question was why doesn't that employee discount apply to all of the rentals, but that makes sense. Yes. Um, okay. And that's one thing we just wanted to clarify because it is such a great space and rental. Um, we needed to make sure that the board was okay with that going forward and that, um, you know, it is not included in our special perk package to our employees. Is that park department employees or city employees? That is just park department employees. Thank you. Any other questions? Entertain a motion for rates to increase for your park facilities and offices. So moved. Your second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I just wanted to, um, if I could, just draw your attention to the back of the agenda that shows the uh, items for the special meeting on October 22nd. Um, we will need to have the card master plan final adoption. Um, we're also working on a greenhouse coal barn project. We'll come through the awarding that bid. It's coming the end of the year. And then I just to reiterate when the purchasing uh, deadlines are nearing and the, and the contract deadlines are nearing, we need to get these things working through our processes. Shelter 11 rebuild, that award will be coming to the board as well as other contracts, awards, and approvals as necessary, as well as the heating options for StarGernet winterization and awarding those bids. The other thing that we'll be adding to that list, since we removed it from today, would be the opening bid proposals for our contract vendors for 2021. Okay, having said that, entertain a motion for adjournment. Great motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.